Yo, what's up guys? Joey here, hope you guys are doing well. Welcome to an RTX 3080 full PC build guide. I know it's been a long time since this channel has seen an upload, but we're back at it again, bigger and stronger than before. Guys, we've acquired a new space. I will be giving you guys a tour on the new space in the future, but anyways, enough about that. We're gonna be breaking down our guide into three parts. So first, we're gonna be going over all the parts as I show you guys how to build the system step by step. Second, we're then gonna be installing stuff. This includes our Windows 10 operating system, any necessary drivers we may need, and then other stuff. And then for our finale, we're gonna be putting our system to the test against all current popular titles. This includes Call of Duty, Valorant, Fortnite, Apex Legends, Siege, and for our VR title, Pavlov VR. I'm really excited to build this. Before we jump into it though, let's go over the price situation. Thrown up on the screen right now is the price we paid for every single part except our graphics card. If you have the opportunity to buy a GPU at MSRP, then you just won the lottery because right now they're always out of stock. The only way to then get a graphics card is to resort to eBay, which is kind of expensive. You kind of got to ball out because the graphics cards then go for double. I've even seen triple the price. And yes, we did have to buy our 3080 from eBay and we spent big big spend for our 3080 guys but anyways we don't want to let that stop us we still want to build systems and that's what we're doing here today so color themes we're working with blue and yellow because got to match our sexy little dude here this is a halo infinite pop the spartan mark 7. by the way guys we have a total of three 3000 series builds planned this one and two others the next one's going to be an rtx 3070 build rocking a Mew Funko Pop. That's gonna be the theme. And then for the other one after that, it's gonna be an RTX 3060 build, rocking a Bandit figure. And we're gonna be using the limited edition Siege case in that one. So that one's gonna be dope. I'm really excited for that build. But anyways, guys, let's get into this one. First, we're gonna be working with our Ryzen 7 5800X CPU. And we're gonna be pairing it with our X570 chipset motherboard. This is an Asus tough one. So let's get both of these things out of their boxes. So at our motherboard box, we got our IO shield and the little screws for our SSD. That's all we're gonna need from the box. All right guys, so first let's take a look at our CPU. If we notice at the bottom left-hand side, there's a golden arrow. And taking a look at our motherboard, there's also an arrow located on the top left side. We're gonna pull our lever out to the side and all the way up, we're gonna line up the golden arrow of our CPU with the arrow on the top left right here on the board. So when we drop it in, we're gonna just let it fall into place like that. We don't want to push it because if we do that, we may bend these pins and that's not good. You're going to have to bend them back into place, repair it. No bueno. So again, just line it up and let it drop into place just like that. Bring our lever all the way back down. Okay, awesome. Our CPU is in. Now let's move into the insulation of our RAM. We went with 16 gigs, 3600 megahertz is what this kit's rated for. This is Corsair's Vengeance RGB Pro RAM, and this is in the black colorway. Boom. So we're using two sticks of RAM for our build, and we wanted to run in dual channel mode. And to do that, just put the RAM in every other slot. The RAM only goes in one way, guys, so make sure you have the indent lined up properly. And we're just gonna put it in and squeeze down on it on both sides with your thumbs evenly and it should just clip right up this lever right here. Same thing for our second one. Just put it into place, press down on it evenly. Boom, done, RAM's in. Moving on to our storage. An M.2 SSD, one terabyte. This is the WD black line. So this tiny speedy drive is gonna go into our M.2 slot on our motherboard. And that's why we got out our screws. Okay guys, so we have four points here. We're gonna be screwing our M.2 standoff to the second point. Cool. And to put in our drive, we simply just stick it into here. Then we're gonna push it down and secure it with the screw that came with our motherboard. Boom, one terabyte of speedy storage installed. So now time to put our motherboard into our case. We went with Corsair's 4000D airflow version and we spray painted it. Originally it's all black. All we did was pretty much spray this blue and we also added a splash of blue side here. So we're gonna be getting our included screws which are located inside our case in the hard drive cage. All right guys, so taking a look inside our case, we're gonna first install our IO shield. What this does is it just provides cover for the inputs of our board. We're just gonna line it up and clip it into place. Done. 
All right, guys, so when installing a motherboard inside a case, you wanna make sure that all the motherboard standoffs inside the case line up with the points on our board. So this is an ATX form factor motherboard, and inside our case, all the standoffs are already in the appropriate positions for an ATX board. So we have three, six, and nine. So when installing my motherboard, I like to put it in at an angle and line up the ports with the IO shield first. Then once I have that in, I'm laying it down and I'm gonna be centering the middle point with the middle standoff. And it's gonna then sit in there nicely. All right, let's get our screws. And just for your reference, it's the screw that looks like this. And we're only screwing in eight because this one right here does not require a screw. That's where it just rests. All right, so now we're gonna be moving on to the installation of our CPU cooler. But first, we're gonna to wanna to get our CPU power cable because if we don't hook up our CPU power cable first, it's gonna be really tricky to get it in there after our cooler's installed. Located in here is what we're looking for. So there's two of them, one CPU cable and our second one. So we're gonna be hooking up the side that says CPU to the motherboard up here. So the first one, we're only gonna be hooking up four pins of it. Gonna push it until it clips like that. And for the second one, we're gonna be hooking up all eight pins. So we're just gonna line it up into place and again, clip it in all the way. Now we wire both cables to the back of the case. And the second one. And it should sit nicely like that. All right guys, so now we're ready to put in our IQ H100i Corsair AIO. So let's open this guy up. So this is what we've retrieved from our box. Our AIO, our AMD AM4 mounting kit, the screws, two fans, and our fan controllers. So first we're gonna be securing our fans to the radiator. Okay, so we have our hose on the right hand side. We wanna make sure that the fan cable is facing down towards us. So we're gonna line up the four points of the fan with the four points on the radiator. And then we're gonna be securing it with the long screws. Same thing for the second fan. And do make sure you secure the fans in this direction. All right guys, so we're gonna be mounting our radiator to the top of our case in this position. First, we wanna wire the fan cables to the back side of our case. So I'm just gonna hold it here for now. We're gonna move to the top and let's remove our magnetic dust filter. And we wanna line up all eight points of our radiator like this. We're gonna be securing it with these tiny little screws that came included with the cooler. All right, now before I fully tighten all the screws, just wanna make sure it's in the middle. That looks good. All right, we can put our filter back on. Okay guys, so now let's prep our brick for our AMD processor. We're gonna remove both of these just by pulling them out like this and get these out of our AMD baggie. And then we wanna make sure that this part is facing up and we're going to put it into here, just like that. Again, same thing for the other side. Also, be careful not to smear the pre-applied thermal paste. Now we're gonna be securing one of these on each side. So it's gonna go in right here, and this is what's gonna then clip into our motherboard. We're just gonna screw it in a little bit, not all the way, because we want as much length as possible to be able to clip it into our motherboard. All right, guys, so we're gonna put it in with the logo facing the correct way. The cables need to be facing the top of the case. We're gonna be latching this on to this clip right here. And then same thing for the bottom one. Got it in. And now I'm going to hold it like this, the brick. I'm pulling it away right now just to make sure it's still latched on and I have a nice grip on it. And I'm gonna center it straight onto the board. And now I'm going to actually place it on the CPU very gently. And then since I'm closer now, I'm then gonna clip in or latch on the bottom one. There, I got it in. So that one's latched on, that one's latched on. And I'm actually not pulling with a lot of force, but just a little bit forced towards me. So these things could stay latched on. And now we're ready to secure it by tightening it with our fingers little by little. First a little bit on the top, still holding it towards me. And now a little bit on the bottom. All right, we can let it go now, it's in. So now we're gonna take our screwdriver and we're gonna tighten it till it stops. So a little bit on top, a little bit on the bottom. Like we don't have to use like any pressure. I'm barely using pressure there. My screwdriver has stopped, so that one's good to go. And the top one has stopped, done. Okay guys, our brick is secured. Now it's time to take a look up there. So our brick has two cables. The tiny little one is gonna hook up to the motherboard. We're gonna be hooking it up to 
the gray input on the left. I'm gonna remove ram stick real quick because I need more space. Actually, both of the ram sticks. There we go, so that's our CPU input. So notice that what we plugged it into, it's four pins. One of the pins on the far left is still exposed because this is only a three pin connector. So that was our CPU fan input. And the second cable, we're gonna wire it to the back of the case. Time to put my ram sticks back in, holding the back of the case with one hand and pushing it with two fingers on both ends. There, clipped in. So now we can remove the protective film on the brick and we're gonna be connecting our fan controller. We're gonna be securing it right here. So let's remove this SSD tray. We're gonna be sticking it right here. Okay, so now time to start connecting stuff to it. So here we have all our cables. So what we're gonna be hooking up to our fan controller is our two fans and the cable from our brick. So first this, it's only gonna go in one way, this way. Now each of our fans have two cables connected to it. So the first one is for the actual fan. We'll put it in number one. And the second cable is to control the lighting of it. Again on number one. And our second fan. Number two. Okay, so those are all the cables we wired from the front, connected. So our fan controller supports six fans. We're gonna be adding four more fans to our system and the total will then be six. It comes with two stock fans inside of our case. We're gonna remove those because we're gonna be replacing them with these right here. So we have three of our AF120 LED fans. They only light up white. Then we have an ML RGB fan. This is the same fan that came included with our AIO. So just for consistency, we're gonna have three of the same fans right here and then three of the same ones in the front. How goes this stock fan? All right, let's get these opened up. All right, let's get our three front fans in first. So we're gonna wire the cable to the back. I'm using the screws that come with the fan. Just gonna secure one by one. All right, let's get our dust filter back on. And our front panel. And now our RGB fan. Wiring the cables to the back. And we're gonna be installing it in this position. Not this way, this way. All right, moving on to the back side of our case again. We wired our RGB fan from the top. We're gonna be connecting that one first. So again, same thing, but on number three. Cool. Now we're gonna do our front three fans. Here they are, and like I said earlier, these do light up, but only white, they're not RGB, so only gonna be connecting one plug for each of the fans, so. First fan, second, and third. Okay, so now all our fans of our system are connected to our fan controller. So now we're left with two cables attached to our fan controller. One of them provides power to the controller, and then the second cable is gonna hook it up to our motherboard so it could communicate and change the colors and speeds of all our fans. We're not gonna connect this yet, so we're gonna set this to the side for now. Now it's time to install our power supply. So we went with an NZXT 750 watt gold rated power supply. Okay, so this is fully modular, which means none of the cables are connected to it. So we're only gonna be connecting what we actually need, which then allows for cleaner cable management within our build. All right, so cables we're gonna need. One PCI Express cable. This cable is gonna power our graphics card. Then the big 24 pin power cable. This is gonna power our motherboard. One SATA power cable, it looks like this. This is gonna provide power to our fan controller. And then of course, to get juice from our wall and some screws. Oh, first our big 24 pin cable. PCI Express cable, SATA cable, and remember for our CPU, the cable's already connected to our motherboard. So let's reach over and grab those. One right there, and right there. So our power supply cables are gonna be exposed in the front of our build. We want our build to look as clean as possible. So we're gonna be attaching these power supply extension cables. These just provide a cleaner look. They come in all sorts of colors, linked in the video description. So originally, our 24 pin's gonna go into the motherboard, right? Well, instead, we're just gonna hook up the extension. And now this is gonna go into the board. 
Now our PCI Express cable. And that's it, just three extension cables is what we're using. All right guys, so to insert a power supply, we wanna make sure that the fan is facing down and we're gonna slide it in through here. And secure it. So located right here on the bottom, you'll find a dust filter. Every once in a while, just clean it out. So we wanted our fan facing down because it's gonna be sucking in air from the bottom of the case through the dust filter and then out through here. All right guys, so we're almost done. I know it's looking like a real spaghetti mess right now, but no need to get intimidated. We're gonna take it one cable at a time. Very simple. So what we're gonna be plugging in is pretty much three groups of cables. The first group is our case cables, which are gonna connect our power button, our USB port, audio jack, all that good stuff in the front of our case to our motherboard. And then the second group of cables is all our power cables, which is gonna power everything. And the last group is our fan controller cables. All right guys, so we've wired all our case cables to the front. So first we're gonna be hooking up our HD audio cable. It only goes in one way. Done. Second, our USB 3.0 cable. Again, it only goes in one way, with this point facing down. Be careful not to bend the pins on this one, like that. Now we're moving on to our tiny little JFP1 cables, which we're gonna hook up right here. So I'm gonna throw up a chart up on the screen to help us out. So our first top left pins, we're gonna be hooking up our power LED. First, the positive on the left and negative on the right. And now for our final two cables, you don't have to worry about positive and negative. First, our reset switch. This one's gonna plug into the third and fourth pins on the bottom. And our power switch is gonna go right above that on the top third and fourth pins. There we go, JFP1 is complete. Now if we move up here, now we're gonna hook up our USB Type-C cable. It only goes in one way. Now we're gonna move on to our fan controller cable. So if we move to the back side of our case, fan controller has two cables. So to power the controller, we're gonna be hooking it up to a power supply SATA cable. And the second cable goes to our motherboard. So this is the USB cable and it's going to connect right here. Should look like that. Done. All right guys, so our CPU power cable is already connected, so we're just left with these two. The big 24 pin power cable is gonna wire through here. So our 24 pin is gonna plug in right here. Notice how there's a little latch. We wanna clip it onto that. So we got our clip. And now we just apply four toe clips. Ta-da, finished product. All right guys, boom, graphics card time. All I got is questions. I never hold no this thing has 10 gigabytes of VRAM. This is the overclocked edition of the card. And we spray painted it yellow. Look at that. Looks clean, guys. Looks super clean. That's a good paint job. This thing's gonna be taking two eight pins of power and we have a lot of video ports, three display ports and two HDMI ports. So we're gonna be putting our RTX 3080 into our first PCI slot. We wanna pull this all the way back down. Then we wanna remove the second and the third brackets to make room for it. And now we just line it up. Once I have it in place, we just then push it in and we're gonna hear a clip. Done. And then resecure it. Now it needs its juice. Two A pin power cables. So in goes one. And the final cable we need to plug in, in goes two. Done, guys, we did it. That wasn't so hard, right? Now all we gotta worry about is where we're gonna be putting in our little sexy dude right here. This dude's flexible AF fam, look at that, what? All right, so this food's just gonna jump up in there, find his little spot. I've been hearing people say that these are like not high quality, that they're just plastic and paint, and like, you're throwing away your money, dude. You know what I say? The moment we've all been waiting for, the cable management time lapse. Everyone's been waiting for it, except me. I haven't been waiting for it at all. I shouldn't be standing with a heart that's so heavy. So we removed our hard drive cage to make more room for our cable management. Make sure you remove this first because I had to do some finger gymnastics. So yeah, before you put in the power supply, remove this. All right guys, so we plugged it in. First boot up. Came out good guys, but I'm gonna add some extra light up in there. So I'm gonna install two RGB LED strips real quick. I'll link these RGB strips in the video description. They're magnetic. So I'm just gonna stick one right there. And then the second one, we're gonna be putting it down here. And we're gonna sneak this cable in through here. There's the opening to the back side of the case. 
All right guys, so both of our RGB LED strips are linked up to this single cable right here. I'm gonna wire it to the front of our case. So we're gonna be hooking up the cable to the white input on our motherboard. Now, notice how there's an arrow right here. We're gonna line that arrow up with the first pin on the left, labeled 12 volt. And it should look like that, guys, with the arrow on the left-hand side. Second boot up. All right, guys, but now time to install stuff, and we're gonna be playing games in no time. But first, if you haven't turned on bell notifications for the channel, be sure to do so so you can be alerted for the future builds that are to come. Remember, there's an upcoming RTX 3070 Mew build and an RTX 3060 Siege build. All right, guys, let's get our operating system and drivers installed, and then we're gonna frag it up. Okay guys, so we arrived at our BIOS, which means everything's good to go. We can start installing Windows 10 now. But first I want to mention that we went with an AMD 5000 series CPU and the motherboard we went with was an X570 chipset board. Now, not all motherboards are compatible with AMD 5000 series CPUs right out of the box. In our case, it was because we were able to arrive at our BIOS. If you don't arrive at your BIOS, then well, you know, it's not compatible right away. Doesn't mean it won't work. You just have to do some tinkering first. And I will show you how to do that in case that's the case for you. Let's take a look at our BIOS version. It's version 3001. Yes. Now, if we go over to the website of our motherboard right here and we're under BIOS and we take a look at all of them, let's find ours. Here it is, 3001. And right here, we can see a note, new CPU support. So obviously we're gonna assume that's for Ryzen 5000 series support. Now say we got a board with one of these older versions. That means we now have to update our BIOS before it's compatible. Now I find it really unlikely that you'll even get a board with one of these versions because say you buy it from Amazon, it's like their new boards with the new BIOS installed, like what I got, 3001. But anyways, when choosing a board for your Ryzen 5000 series CPU, I recommend you choose a board with this feature. It's called the BIOS flashback feature. And what it does is it allows you to update the BIOS through the USB port and then just pressing that button. And then as soon as you're done updating your BIOS through that feature, you then turn on your system and you will arrive here within our BIOS and then we can install Windows. So like I mentioned guys, I doubt you're gonna get a later version. So if you do buy this board, it's gonna be good to go right out of the box as far as our CPU support. Now I will be showing you guys how to update the BIOS with that feature in case some of you guys got an older version. But anyways, we're gonna install Windows 10. Here I have my Windows 10 USB. You can create one of these. I made a video tutorial on how to do it. It's like video description or you can just purchase one like from Best Buy or Windows 10 USB. Okay, so we're going to turn off our system, plug in our USB and power it back on. Okay, so it booted up directly to our USB flash drive and now we're going to install Windows. Next, install now. I don't have a product key. You have one, insert it there. Windows 10 Pro, just read that real quick. All right, there we read it. Next, custom installation is what we're selecting. Right here is where we would pick where do we want to install Windows 10. We only have a one terabyte SSD in this system, so that's our only option. Select and then next. All right, cool. So our system finished copying over all the files and then it rebooted. Now, once we arrive to this screen, we're good to go. This doesn't need to be plugged in. All files have been transferred. US for me. Yes. Skip. So we're not able to connect to the internet yet. We have to install our drivers. So we'll title this rig Mark 7. You can do whatever you want here. I know, it's let it do its thing. So when we arrive at our desktop, we're gonna get this little pop-up and pretty much telling us to install this program, which we do want. So we're gonna click yes. And also this program is gonna install the LAN driver automatically, which is the driver we need to then be able to connect to the internet. So there we go, it already installed the preloaded driver that was on the motherboard to our system. And now we are connected to the internet through our ethernet cable. And also this program is being installed, which is gonna let us then customize the lighting within our build. Okay, installation <laughs> failed, but it installed the LAN driver, so we're connected to the internet. It's okay, we can install this program later. I'm just gonna click okay. And I'm gonna go to the control panel to make sure it wasn't installed. Nope. All right, let's get rid of it. This is part of it, but we don't want anything to be there. We want it to install completely. Watch, all we have to do is then just restart the system. Okay guys, so we restarted our system and we went to our motherboard's website and here's where we're gonna find and download all our drivers that we need to install. That program that we were installing and it said installation failed for whatever reason, it's right here. So we're just gonna download it manually and install it. So I'm gonna save everything to my desktop for easy access. Okay, cool. So there's that program, we'll install it to change our lights. So we're gonna wanna download, not our LAN driver that was already pre-installed for us. We're gonna download our wireless driver Save it to the desktop. We're gonna download our AMD chipset driver, audio driver, 
and I would say download the Bluetooth driver as well. But when I click down here, the Bluetooth signal is already up, which means it must have been pre-installed with our LAN driver. So I'm going to leave this one alone. It may also be that our wireless driver was already installed too. But if I go to the control panel, uninstall program, I don't see it here, the wireless drivers. So we're going to install it just to make sure. Under utilities, nothing we want, nothing here. Now let's go over to our BIOS and we're gonna be downloading the newest BIOS, not the beta version though. We don't want that. We'll download 3603, download. Save as to the desktop. Okay guys, so here we have everything. We can't install it yet until we unzip the file. So right click them, extract all, extract, and it's automatically gonna open up the folder we extracted, which is right here. So now we can go inside and access it. We're going to do the same thing for the rest. All right, guys, so we don't need these anymore. Delete and we'll start with the Armory Crate app. Yes, Armory Crate and Aura start. OK, it's completed. All right, now our Wi-Fi driver, we're going to double click it. Asus setup. Yes. OK, so I know just those popped up and it looks like nothing happened, but it's done. It's installed. Okay, next one. Chipset driver. AC setup. Yes. We'll leave this all checked. Install. Awesome. And now our audio driver. I'm gonna go to again setup. Yes. Okay, audio driver's installed. And that's it. Now what we have down here is our BIOS. So let's open it up and we're gonna double click the BIOS renamer tool any key to continue and as you can see it renamed this we need to do that if we're going to be using it with the bios flashback feature so now we're going to insert an empty usb drive drag our updated renamed bios file into it okay also guys the usb that you use go to properties you got to make sure that it's fat 32 if not then you have to right click it format it select that and then click start then it's going to be fat 32 and then you can put the bios file but we're already good to go so there's our sexy little system we're gonna go mobile now so let's unplug our usb flash drive turn off our system so in the back of our system we're gonna hook up our flash drive with the updated bios file to where it says bios and then we're gonna hold our bios button for three seconds so one two three let it go and it should start flashing. So the updating process has begun. Once it stops flashing, that's how you know it's been updated and then we're gonna reboot our system. So let's just wait. Once it's done flashing, that means it's completed. Okay guys, so now when we boot up our system, it's gonna update our LED firmware. Now we press F1 to run setup. Okay, cool, and we've arrived at our BIOS. So now if we take a look at our version, it's no longer 3001, it's our new one, 3603. So now that we're here, we wanna make sure that our RAM that we purchased is running at its rated speed. Now remember, our kit's rated for 3600 megahertz. Right now it's not running at that, and we wanna get our money's worth. So we're gonna head over to advanced mode, and we're gonna go to AI tweaker. And notice right here on memory, it says it's running at 2100 megahertz. That is not what we want. So we're gonna go to AI overclock tuner. We're gonna select DLCP and it's automatically gonna change it to 3600 megahertz. Now we can exit, save changes and reset. This is what we're changing. Okay. System's gonna reboot and take us back to our desktop. All right, awesome guys, we're almost done. So now we don't need these anymore. So we've installed our motherboard drivers, updated our BIOS, and made sure our RAM was running at its rated speed. Now it's time to install our graphics card drivers. And we're gonna do that with the GeForce Experience program. I'll place a link to this in the video description. Download now, run, yup. Agree and install. So we're gonna head over to drivers, and here's our newest one. Pops up right away, download. Express installation. Yes, restart later. Okay, graphics card driver is done. Now guys, we're gonna be installing the IQ program to be able to control our AIO and change the fan speed and fan colors of everything. Yes. Next, finish. Okay, so now let's restart our system, restart. 
Okay guys, so let's get our lighting programs. So we have our first one here, boom, Armory Crate. So Armory Crate lets you change the lights on your motherboard and then our RGB LED strips as well. And our 3080 popped up too. We're gonna go to effects. I'm gonna pick static, which means there's just gonna be one color, no like flashy strobe, crazy stuff, just real simple. We'll pick this color. So our strips are now that color. Okay guys, so now let's change our fan colors, IQ. So the IQ program lets us change our motherboard and our graphics card as well, actually it popped up, but we're gonna be changing our RAM color right now, lighting effects, and then here's red. We'll stick to that color. So when we go to our brick, we can then control our three fans and the brick color pulse. Throw. But our three front fans, those are only white. These are not RGB like we mentioned earlier, but I mean, if you want to be a baller and cop all RGB fans, you can, and then these will be fully customizable as well. But anyways, we're done. Our system looks awesome, guys. I love how it came out. So now we're going to install a game and then we're going to start playing. And the example I will be showing you guys is theme. Bam, bam. Next, agree, finish. And then once your game's done downloading, launch it up and you're ready to go. All right, guys, we're going to play Fortnite now. These are our settings and DX11, DLSS on balance, and video reflex low latency on plus boost. Ah, I got him. All right, he's on top. He's on top. Got him. I shot him for 100. He's dead. Wow. Yeah, it's not a bot. It's a player. He's fishing. Oh, there's two of them. There's two of them, man. Oh, you picked the wrong house, boy! Oh, Whoops. I downed one, I downed one, I downed one. Yeah. Nice. Good job, man. There's someone going, there's someone over there. Going for the box, someone going for the box. Oh, no! My mouse went out of, my mouse went out of battery and I connected. Don't panic, we're good. All right, all right, you know what I'm saying? All right, all right, all right, it's connected, it's connected. Connected, where you at, where you at? Let's, let's dip, let's dip. He's down, one set, one set. Where's the other one? I see him, I see him. He's on me, he's on me. He's down, he's down. What the? What the? Oh, sh <laughs> just shoot this. In front of us! In front of us! He's lit, he's lit. I shot him for 49. Look at him, he fell, look up, look up, look up. It's fine! Yo, kill the guy in front of us. He's down, he's down. On me, on me, on me, on me! I mean, one more on me, one more on me. I down his teammate. Oh, fuck. Let me, I'm dry. Just survive, bro. Win the game. You got this. Get behind. That? Kill that guy right in front of you. Kill him. Kill him. No. no. <laughs> All right, guys, moving on to our VR title, Pavlov VR. We're gonna be running this game at maxed out settings. So ultra, 100% resolution scale. We're rocking the Valve Index. So we have it set to the highest refresh rate, 144, and resolution per eye is set at 100%. This game's awesome. It has so many mods. You see what I'm talking about. Uh, how do you play this, man? Cause I've never even played Among Us. Um, basically, anybody who comes near you is sus and good. Okay. Look, all we need to do is just ask, you know, it's just an honesty system, okay? What does yours say? <laughs> oh, alright. Innocence. Okay. Let's do this. Whoa, you got a Kimbo, man? That's cool. Oh, what happened? Oh, shoot. Whoa. I'll kill myself. Okay? No, 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 whoa. Hey, don't aim at me. Don't do it. Yes, look, look, there's the three musketeers to our left. They're all together. Why are they all together? Huh? Fuck huh? What are you? Yes, well, okay, okay, okay. Wait, okay. Yes. Look, this is gonna end really badly, all right? Whoa, 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 whoa. What happened over there, dude? Team, you're the team. You're the team. You're the team. Okay, that means just one T left, everyone. Let's all be calm about this and rational. <laughs> Hey, relax! Come down! <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys, so we're on to COD. We're gonna be playing some Warzone. The settings we're using, we have NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency. It's on Enabled Plus Boost. And then the rest of our settings, here they are. And we have our FOV at 120. 
Where you going? I don't know, man. Where you trying to go, man? You feel me? I'm about that action, man. I'm about that action, man. Come on. Y'all know the deal. Y'all know the deal. You're the last one. Complete the mission. I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. Get him, get his ass. Get his ass. Now, now. There's one kid left. Right here. What? One more, one more, one more, one more. My boy, my boy. How do you play this game? What the f <laughs> He said, how do you play this game? <laughs> but he just wiped the whole squad. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, Apex Legends. We have our field of view set to 100. NVIDIA Reflex, Enable Plus Boost, and the rest of our settings. Here they are. Oh my. Let's do this. Can you get him a heat right behind you? I have another heat shield. Oh shit. Oh my goodness. Oh no. Oh no. And we died. So the settings we're going to be using for Valorant. We have NVIDIA Reflex. It's to on plus boost. It's for low latency. And for graphics quality, here it is. Boom. Just take a seat. I got this. What? Oh, what? Oh, no. What the? Oh, come on, man. No, 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 no. We're not losing this. Comes to come back. <laughs> Can I get this? Thanks. Okay. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Down low, up top. Up top. One I'm enemy to remaining. The bus stop. Bus stop. Good. Some roll, some fly. I ain't get my shot yet. One flank. Like don't pop, don't pop. One enemy remaining. Keep going. Yes, I got yes, this yes, yes. my trim. The comeback is real. Last guy was on A. I have bomb on me. I have bomb on me. I'm a hustler. Oh my goodness. This that double shift. This that overtime. I'm on my dial plan. Let's go. Sudden death. They're not coming B. Nice. Yo, what a comeback, guys. Nice. Good comeback, Bro, GG's. That was, GG's that was crazy. All right, time for some Siege. FOV 75 graphics. Here they are. I'm gonna get out of silver now. We have a long way to go. We are silver four. We can do it though. Now have yellow stairs. Pulse. Drop the diffuser. Down to one 
friendly. Nice, bro. Uh, you clutched it. I'm gonna lasso up behind them right now. Just distract. So you can find out. Guys, they did not know what hit them right there. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. you going for flank. Uh, oh, it's the last one. Christian. We have been eliminated. Damn. So. We just lost another one. Now we have to win three in a row for gold. Yo, thanks for the call outs. Good game, man. Good game. Thanks for their care. Let's do it. Hello. We got this. All right, guys, we're going to wrap it up right there. If you haven't turned on bell notifications for the channel yet, be sure to do so so you can be alerted for the future build guides that we're going to drop. Also, thanks for watching the video till the end. I really appreciate it. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. <laughs>